Hello, I'm James Hunter. Welcome to the Blues Kitchen. James Hunter is a one-of-a-kind British R&B musician and soul singer. His seventh studio album, Whatever It Takes, is released on Daptone Records on Friday, 2nd of February. James is the only British artist to have signed to Daptone, the very same label that introduced the world to Sharon Jones, the Dat Kings and Charles Bradley. We sit down to discuss the making of James's most recent album and, as is customary in this series, James performs a stunning acoustic cover of Jimmy Rogers' That's All Right. James Hunter. Hey Liam, how are you? Very well, welcome to Blue's Kitchen. Oh, thanks for having us. So, in a short while, we're going to have a bit of a performance from you doing a Jimmy Rogers tune. Uh huh. Before we get to that, your new album is out next week. It is, yeah. It's out on the 2nd, isn't it? Second That's February. right, yeah. Entitled Whatever It Takes. Indeed. Tell us about the recording of the record. Oh, right. We, this time. It took us about two weeks. Uh, the recording was all two weeks, and we did everything in one go, except for you know, multiple takes for a couple of the trickier ones. And, uh, <laughs> all the mixing was done after we'd gone home. Cause, oh, really? Uh, yeah, because, uh, uh, <laughs> well, our return ticket had run out, plus Gabe, uh, Gabe Roth didn't really want us getting in the way. Right. <laughs> but he did re relay the mixes over to me so I could give a bit of feedback. And you were recording in LA this time, because yes, right. am I right in thinking Daptone, which are releasing your record, they've moved, kind of, from the House of Soul in New York over to LA for a bit of sun. They do that. I mean, this is a relatively new, uh, what do you call it, a studio, studio they've got, and we were the ones who tested it oh, really? about two, two albums ago. Yeah, we yeah. were the first people to road test it for, for them. And I think he says he prefers that studio for us. The acoustics are pretty good, and you get quite a three-dimensional sort of sound for the horns. There's, you know, there's a lot of bite on everything. It's really nice. Nice. And it's, uh, there's a lot more room. I've visited the... Uh, Brooklyn one. It's a very homey place, lovely building, but it's a bit pokey to play in, you know. Well, I like the story about that place, though, the uh, New York one, is that it was all built pretty much by the people that recorded there, wasn't it? I think yeah, you had that's Sharon right. Jones putting up the drywall and doing the electrics, and Charles that's Bradley was doing the plumbing. And yeah. yeah, there was a real, it's like a real mum and dad operation. It's kind of, I, I, I feel a bit jealous. I, I kind of half wish I was in on it right from the beginning you know it's a nice story isn't it you, you've toured with Sharon Jones as well I you? have yes I met her a few times she was very nice actually pretty crazy but you know she's very right. very kind very kind soft person you know when you get underneath you know well actually we've been very lucky over the years we've interviewed Charles Bradley and Lee Fields and uh, Sean yeah. and Star and there oh, is they're lovely too. Yeah. they're wonderful and yeah. there's something about that whole label it's very much like being at home, you know, and they all have such a lovely positive energy about them, yeah. and they're all very welcoming. So when you go over, I assume it's just like, welcome into the family, here you are. It feels like that, yeah. I mean, obviously they're all really, you know, they're all the artists and staff I've met do have that welcoming, sort of warm vibe, you know, and I suppose me and my lot, we're the only members of the family who are the exception, really. Because you are that. the only British artist on. We are, so, and we bring that attendance sort of British standoffish snootiness and, you know. <laughs> So what, what, I mean... You Just know, another flavour, really. Maybe thing. give us a little bit of an indication of the difference between working with an English band or British band yeah. and a British band both in the studio and, and live. If you can compare well, I the only two. play with a British band. You know, it's all mm. whether we're over there or not. I, I've yeah. always got my lot. Are you always if, take if that over was the James Hunter Six? Yes, it's a regular. I mean, when I first started going over there for economy reasons, we'd get a bunch of guys who were based there. Yeah. And um, well, if you want to know about that, that was a different feel. They were much more disciplined and machine tooled, and but yeah. some of the vibe was a little bit just not quite where we wanted it. Whereas. My fellas, my, my mates are uh, quite, could be quite ramshackle, but the, the, <laughs> the kind of spirit, the looseness was, was there. Yeah. You know, it's where, uh, it's where I'd say professionalism is kind of uh, a little bit overrated, you know. So um, we played I Got Eyes on the oh, yes, uh, yes. podcast a couple of weeks ago. And it's an incredible tune. But oh, I yeah. haven't yet had a chance to listen to any of the albums. It's not out for another week. Maybe you could take us on a little bit of a crash course through the record, what's the listener got to expect this time that might be different to your previous records? I suppose it is. Is it different? I mean, the concept isn't. It's because uh, uh, people often ask, you know, things about what's your favourite album, and I don't have, 
You know, I don't think in terms of albums. I, th I think of them in the old-fashioned way as just a bunch of songs chucked together. So yeah, there, okay. there isn't any kind of unifying theme, except they're, except they're nearly all uh, inspired by my wife. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the ones that weren't actually written about her were actually written to cheer her up when we were uh, going through some hard times uh, regarding getting her uh, immigration status. Oh, uh, OK. Yeah. You know what, that, I read a quote, I think it was in your album, Blurb, that says, there's a common theme on whatever it takes, not about infidelity, shallow seductions, or any other common cliches of R&B. The song's a poetic testament of truer love which I thought was really nice. It is nice, isn't it, yeah. Um, so it sounds like you were in quite a good place when you were writing this record. I think so, yeah, yeah. Riverside, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quite literally. Metaphorically as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, metaphorically too, you know. It was uh, it was good. But I still managed to be fairly, you know, I'll keep, I'll keep that British sardonicism in there when I can. So what about getting out on the road? Obviously you're going to tour this record. We are. We're, we're starting, in fact, I think the tour pretty much coincides with the release of the album. Yeah. Yeah. And are you going UK, Europe, America? What's happening? Both, actually. Yes, yeah. first America. You know, it's uh, we're covering most of the um, East Coast on this one, and then we'll be doing we'll be doing Europe afterwards. Where are your American hotspots? Where are the James Hunter fans lurking? Oh, well, well, where we got the main ones is the uh, so where, where where there tend to be more old folks' homes is where we tend to get. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with you playing kind of good soul and R and B music. Do you find that when you travel to the towns that are known for that kind of music that you fit in or is it more if you're in New York it works because it's busy and you know. Yeah because I rely on the fact that uh, most of the people uh, you know don't remember what the original stuff <laughs> that we stole from was like you know so I figure we can get away with it. So you go well down south as well? Yeah we haven't really done the deep south extensively but mm. um, when, when we have you know people tend to be into it and you can get, you know, sometimes you can get lucky with getting the original records quite cheap down there. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. They're, they're not quite as much of a holy grail there. They, they, they just regard them as oldies, you know. So are you still yeah. very much on the crate digging when you're out on the road? I, you know, when I can, yeah. Yeah, 45s, yeah. man? Or are you out for uh, yeah, beers, 45s, man? yeah, generally. Is that a, a large room in your house that's made up of 45s and stacks of records? Everywhere? Yes, well, it's the only room we've got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there any particular gold mines that you found? Any great little record stores you found when you've been on the road? Yeah, we, we were out in uh, Louisiana. Uh, not sure it will. I can't remember the exact town. Baton Rouge, perhaps. Yeah. And we went to this. Uh, we we were invited after hours after the gig to this record shop. It's like a private viewing, you know. Wow, that's Where we could cool. buy half their stock, which was uh, which is marvellous. And it was all local artists like Paul Perryman and uh -huh. people who mainly only had local hits. You know, and it was, uh, it was a lot of treasures in there. It was That's great. really wonderful. You don't really get that in UK record stores. It's like when you go into any record store in the States, there's always like the local area. You know, yeah. and it's like even if you go to LA, it's like there's a chunk of LA record. Well, like, you, there was never anything like, you, you never got anything like a local hit in this country, did you? You know, I suppose not. Yeah. May, only maybe the, the somebody size. like the singing postman in the 60s who knocked the Beatles off the top spot, but yeah. only in East Anglia, you yeah. know, that's that kind of thing. But Which uh, is where we all grew up, actually. That's right. <laughs> we're, oh, we're yeah, all, we're all from, from there and all, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we ever no, going? No relation to the singing postman. Oh, no? No, unfortunately not. Uh, I kind of assume we all were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, in a short while, you're going to be performing a Jimmy Rogers tune yeah. for us. It's always interesting to know what the guests on the show are going to cover and their reasons, but is there mm -hmm. any particular love you have for this tune or any particular story or anything that's nice and charming about Jimmy Rogers that led you to it? There is. I mean, I, I, I've seen it. I forgot. I've actually seen him... I think I met him at the 100 Club a few years ago. He was... Uh, He's very nice, and he was, he was, you know, I was surprised. He seemed younger than I expected him to be, but uh, I think he's gone now. But uh, obviously, you tell anyone that doesn't know, there was two Jimmy Rogerses. There was the white one, the singing break man, who was a uh, bluegrass country singer, and the black one, whose song I'm going to do, was Muddy Waters guitarist, and did a lot of records in his own right. And uh, I don't really know much about him except he was a really good, understated singer. You know, yeah. unlike myself. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything that you maybe have learned or could we say stolen from his performance style or his recordings? No, no, just this song. I just, just nicked, this one I song. just nicked that quite a lot. because it's. I, I think he did 
things like walking by myself, which blues purists hate because it's only got two chords instead of three, yeah. and it's and it sounds like a pop song, yeah. you know, and it gets a bit. It's, it's a bit like a blues pop song, and I like it when blues sort of confounds the purists and breaks out into the pop market. Me too. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's what, I love the um, be, uh, Freddie King version of um, "Walking by Myself." Do you know that the song? No, his I haven't album heard going it. Down. I bet it's good. You yeah. should go and check that out. Definitely. Cool. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to introduce your tune. This is uh, Jimmy Rogers's That's All Right. You told me, baby, once more time. You said, Bobby, yours. you would sure be mine, but that's all right. Oh, 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 that's all right. Every now and then I begin to wonder, whoa, oh, oh, who's loved you tonight? You told me, baby, your love for me was strong. When I woke up this morning, Everything I have is gone, but that's all right. Oh, that's all right. Every now and then I begin to wonder, whoa, who's loving you tonight?